This conference will now be recorded. Well, very good morning, good evening. So my name is Kranti. So I'm representing Career IT uh, online trainings uh, for Azure DevOps uh, online trainings case. So a warm welcome uh, to all of you. I really wanted to appreciate uh, and thanks for your time uh, joining out for uh, this uh, demo session on uh, your weekend Sunday, right? So let's go ahead and get started without any further delay. So before I go ahead and get started, don't you think that it is very much important for all of you to know about uh, the faculty who is actually going to give the training on Azure DevOps? Why? Because uh, nowadays we are mostly doing the virtual trainings, right? Using the remote uh, tools that we have like GoToMeeting or Zoom, Cisco WebEx or Microsoft Teams, right? So we have the flex flexibility of training, taking the trainings being at home, correct? So you might not be seeing uh, me from the faculty perspective, nor I am seeing you, right? So before you go ahead and choose an institute, why? Because you might guess have taken a, a decision to move to cloud computing technologies and to Azure DevOps, right? So you might have a lot of questions. Okay, I'm taking a decision to move to cloud. So how the career would be for me for the next 10 to 15 years? Right, how what could be the role? What are the responsibilities could be? Right, choosing the right institute, right trainer might definitely work for you. You might have did a lot of analysis and you might have joined this demo session and obviously wanted to know about the faculty, correct? Isn't it, guys? Yes, yes, Kante. <laughs> So let me take this opportunity to introduce myself guys. So my name is Kranti. I am one of the technical manager working in an MNC in Hyderabad and I do carry 14 plus years of experience in the IT industry. So out of 14 years, I've been into cloud computing technologies since six years now, right? That to multi-cloud, it might be Microsoft, Azure, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform or Alibaba Cloud plus DevOps. So my profession is an IT employee, but my passion is a training, right? So I've been into training since seven years now, and uh, I'm proud to say that I've trained so far 32,500 plus people and the count is still going on, right? So I'm a lead corporate trainer. So that's where I, I train multiple folks on different batches, right? 
on multiple technologies right when once the training is done probably we will be going and uh, deploying them uh, into the project that we might be having in our company so i've taken multiple interviews so far on multiple technologies being a project manager uh, for multiple requirements that we used to have right and you all might be having a question as to hey kranti we have so many institutes in the market so many trainers who are delivering training online nowadays but why we have to go ahead and choose career it only for azure devops why because we are playing a unique role in the market so why we are unique why because the training pattern that we have is completely different so we will be starting with let's say if everything goes well you guys might enroll and we start the live trainings right let's assume it's the day one right so obviously on day one we might be touching base on the very basics from the course content that we have correct so i'll first talk about the theory and then i'll be moving on to the day-to-day -day life examples to help you guys connect what is cloud computing what is devops what we can do how we can correlate with the day-to-day -day life right so why day-to-day -day examples why because the folks i mean all of you might be attending this iu devops for the very first time right you might not be knowing about what is cloud computing what is azure what is devops you might not be knowing or having any insights on the terminologies or the technology right so for me it is very much important to train from a scratch train from the very scratch why because not everybody knowing about the terminologies right so the biggest ability to train a layman as well who doesn't know anything about it nor any technology right so it is very much easy for them to go ahead and learn from the scratch right there should not be any worry in learning a new technology right so that is my capability once a day-to-day -day life examples is done probably i'll be bringing in a real-time example so i'll be taking a customer or client into picture if they give us the requirements so being from a company being a devops engineer being a project manager or being a lead how we have to take those requirements from the customer and how we have to channelize them into implementation right what are the challenges that we might face what are the uh, technical roadblocks that we might get into like a lot of things that we'll be discussing from the real-time perspective and uh, at last if you implement a service to the customer what is the value add that we are gonna showcase to the customer matters for us at the end of the day right so we'll be discussing from all the parameters right so once that is done probably we will be talking about the interview questions from the same topic on the same day so why interview questions why because you guys might be attending the session with only one goal what is your goal you might have to learn azure devops in the specified course duration and once the course is done you have to complete or give the interview and crack the interview and you have to get selected as a devops engineer for any company correct so your goal or your intent is simple to attend to this session so i am here from career it to make sure that i'm involving in each and every phase and i'll be helping you to crack an interview and to get a job right that's where i'll cover interview questions from the theory from real time so that you should be able to showcase that okay you already worked on devops and you can project certain experience if you're already an experienced uh, it employee and then you can easily crack an interview so once the course is done you can at least put three to four years of experience that you already worked on azure devops and you can search for a job case so once the interview questions is done we'll be talking about a lot of interview tips and tricks so what kind of questions that you, we can get how we can go ahead and answer how you should be smart in terms of answering the questions a lot of tips and tricks that would be shared and would be conducting at least three mock interviews during the entire course duration days one mock interview will conduct in the second week once we complete the basics and uh, the second mock interview in the middle of the course and the third and final mock interview would be before we complete the course case so why mock interviews why because you should know what kind of questions that the interviewers will ask correct in the real time and uh, by conducting mock interviews i'll be analyzing each and every individual who is going to enroll for this course why because there is a saying zero to hero so you guys might be learning the new technology from scratch from zero level right and nobody can become hero overnight 
let's forget about becoming a hero in a technology especially in azure devops now why because you're going to learn this course from the scratch from the beginner level so but what i can give you assurance is i'll be at least able to bring you guys from zero to an intermediate level after completing this course for that i'll ask a lot of questions on daily basis while conducting mock interviews and be analyzing each and every individual and i would be giving feedback straight away on the areas that you have to improve probably what are the areas communication is one thing so nowadays communication is the key if you don't have communication probably you might get rejected along with communication we need to have articulation how you are articulating expressing the things to the interview how well you are actually portraying your answer right so few people might not answer to 100% or to some extent they'll always start from step 1 step 2 and they directly pitch on to step 5 right so that is not a good approach so a lot of things would be discussing in the day to day as to how we have to answer a question how you need to be smart a lot of interview tips and tricks and i'll analyze a lot of things and i'll give suggestions recommendations or improvement areas so that you can go ahead and improve so in the entire course duration you always have to assume that i am a interview panel i am from the technical interview panel perspective i'll ask a lot of questions on daily basis and i'll be sharing the feedback as well so you should not have to feel uncomfortable while creating or giving the interview right so obviously when you give your interview we will always always feel nervous right so i'll be making sure that i'll be relieving that nervousness right so once the mock interview is done yes we'll help you in resume preparation on case to case basis so few people might be freshers few people might be from non technical background few people might be an it employee so how we can go ahead and prepare resume on case to case basis we will be discussing about that so once that is done i'll be giving you the career guidance on azure why right? because you are going to uh, take a very good step getting into cloud microsoft azure now so i'll be able to tell you how your future in the next 10 to 15 years is going to be right and what are the roles based certifications that we have or whether devops is suitable or whether you want to learn anything additional in the future while you are getting experience we'll be talking about a lot so on top of that <clears throat> we have added corporate etiquettes as part of the training as well so you can ask me a question as to kranti are we talking about a technology here which is about azure devops or are we talking about corporate etiquettes here corporate etiquette is also important guys from a learning perspective why because do you think a fresher or a non technical individual might be knowing about it company or how things works in it how we get projects what is the role of an engineer or a devops uh, engineer or a project manager lead who is a customer who are stakeholders what would how you should behave in a company do do a fresher or a non technical individual knows about all of these things guess do they know about all of these things so can no i believe right so i'll be here to teach you everything from the scratch so your sustainability would be very easy once you join a company by the time you would be already knowing how things happen in company how we get projects what would be our roles and responsibilities how we have to sync up with your managers and build a rapport right how you should be innovative how you should basically come up with a lot of ideas taking initiatives right so these are all will be value added for you when it comes to appraisals when it comes to your performance appraisals on yearly basis so that you can get a good rating you can be unique in the team right and how i mean by following all of these things obviously you will get a good high cas well so all of these things will also be taught in the course case so that you would be already knowing before you join a company as to how a company operates right so apart from that i'm very good at multi cloud and i did multiple certifications from multi cloud perspective you can see the certifications on the screen right and i'm very good at sql server power bi powershell and being a manager i'm very good at implementing itl framework and i've been into operations since years now and i've been very good at managing people project client management stakeholder management and being a transition manager earlier i used to visit abroad to take the projects from on offsite i mean onshore to offshore and i would be able to settle them down here 
right so these are all uh, my uh, capabilities if i have to say and on top of that i'm a microsoft certified trainer so i've been certified from microsoft as a certified trainer so the kind of material the kind of real time scenarios the kind of discussions material that i share are completely different when you compare with anybody else in the market case so i believe with all of these i'm super confident that i have a lot of ability to go ahead and uh, give you guys training on microsoft azure devops so this slide is just to give you that uh, flexibility trust and confidence that okay you guys are going to choose a right faculty for your moment into cloud computing so at this point of time any questions before we move on to the demo session guys any questions that you guys have guys you can unmute yourself we did not put any restrictions any questions before we move on to the demo <laughs> okay i'll take it as a no at least please confirm if you're able to hear me and able to see my screen uh, yes can yeah just just, just, uh, yeah, yeah. just just want to check with the church check with you one thing what are the main responsibilities of devops in the current arc maybe in the situations present situations like because as i'm uh, as i'm working as a qa engineer last 20 years mm -hmm. uh, i, I uh, many times i'm in like the devops teams to my uh, sync up the, the pipelines and everything apart from that uh, like a deployments or something like that so is mm -hmm. the system monitoring system health check everything is part of devops rule devops yes absolutely so we will be going with uh, the course content right probably i okay. should be able to tell you what exactly uh, devops and uh, what is each and everybody's role what is the role of a developer tester scrum master project manager cloud lead or your customer then you have stakeholders you have uh, a itil team you have azure infrastructure team you have the maintenance and monitoring team release and deployment team lot of teams that we have right so we'll talk about uh, while uh, in, in the demo itself uh, when we talk about what exactly devops is thank you okay any other questions before we move further to the demo Okay, I'll take it as a no. Let's move further, guys. I mean, I don't want to get started with DevOps directly. Why? Because if I start discussing about DevOps, probably you might not be able to understand anything, right? So before that, we need to understand the process or the methodology that we used in the traditional days to develop a software, to develop a product, or to develop a website. So we'll first discuss about that okay so as i discuss i have a habit of talking about a lot of day-to-day -day examples so that you can correlate right so let's talk about certain examples from day-to-day -day life to help you guys correlate with the official sdlc life or with official devops and azure right so let's say anybody wanted to have a conversation with me so that we can casually have a talk while we are doing the demo session anybody is open to have a conversation with me just a casual conversation right so i'll be making your job easy to understand that's it any volunteer just a casual discussion nothing rocket science that we're going to discuss Nobody is ready. Okay, let's talk with me only then. That's not the problem. So let's say I have a I'm married and I have a kid, right? So we are in 2022 now. We are using smartphones with AI, artificial intelligence enabled, correct? So if my kid is asking, Hey, hey, dad, uh, what is this all about? This smartphone is all about, 
right so probably i have to tell her a story from the traditional way correct from the olden days so i have to tell her a story that hey beta probably in 70s we used to have landlines right so even i have a landline mobile phone in my home probably i can showcase to her right then i'll talk about the evolution of technology where from landlines we have evolved with a basic feature phone which is having a small screen with a keypad correct that is happened in 90s then in early 20s we have come up with uh, the smartphones correct the basic smartphones where you see a smart screen and a keypad right where we were in 2g era the second generation era of the network then we have moved into smartphones a complete smartphone the complete screen would be smart screen you don't see a keypad then we might be got into an era of 3g network third generation network correct then now you see what is the advancement that we have done with the smartphones we have smartphones with ai enabled we are using a lot of latest technology to make the processor good to have the 5g technology hosted as well though the 5g was not there in india yet but it, it might be there in other countries but still we have phones that are coming up with 5g technologies and it is allowing a lot of bands 5g network bands correct probably this is a story that i should tell to my kid if she or he is asking about uh, what is a phone the evolution of a mobile phone correct so i'll talk about one other situation right so let's say if i have to prepare a plain rice for my lunch or dinner a plain white rice what is the procedure probably if you ask me two ways that i can go ahead and prepare rice so the first situation is let's say i wanted to prepare rice for a couple of people then i'll take two cups of raw rice i'll clean it a couple of times then i'll add four cups of water double the quantity of the raw rice that i might have taken right in order to cook the rice properly so what i'll do after adding water i'll, I'll soak it for 10 to 15 minutes if i really have time right so once the rice is soaked i'll be going with a manual method of preparing the rice case in a gas stove. so i'll put the vessel on top of the gas and i'll be lightening up the gas and i'll be putting it in high flame for initial five minutes then i'll be putting it in medium flame for 10 minutes then probably in low sim for the next five minutes right then the rice would be cooked properly correct agree guys is this a process or you do you have a different way it's correct it's correct right? Same process. so in this process there is a manual requirement i mean there is a human presence that is needed every time correct there is a frequent check that has to be happened why because we are preparing rice outside in a gas stove so what happens if i put the flame in high flame and i'm doing my work i left the vessel as is what happened what happened what is going to happen guys So if I no, put in high, no, it will no, over boil and overflow, no. correct? Correct. And what happens if I if I don't uh, bother about that? It will be burnt after some time, and I can sense the smell. Then I realize that or I have put rice on the gas stove and I forgot, correct? So at cheetah in every stage, there is a frequent visit that is required to monitor the rice to see whether it is cooking absolutely perfect. So this is one method. To prepare the rice manually but there is another method what is the other method it's an automated way so the same process the initial process that i follow i'll take two cups of water two cups of raw rice i'll wash it carefully and i'll put four cups of raw rice i mean water now and i'll soak if i have time for 10 to 15 minutes and i'll take the bowl and i'll put it in the electric rice cooker i'll put the lid and i'll switch on the switch so that the rice would be cooked absolutely perfect after 15 to 20 minutes I agree is there a manual intervention that is needed? Is there a manual intervention that is needed, guys? Only the initial time it's required the manual intervention. Yes, but later it's automated, correct? Correct. Right? 
so now we understood what now we learned what we learned the evolution of a mobile phone we learned how what is the process of preparing a plain rice there is a two way right so devops is like an automated way devops is like an automated way so we are now gonna understand about the development of software so rice preparation there are two different ways that we can go ahead and prepare correct so if you talk about laptop again it has a preparation method right so let's say i'm using a hp laptop do you think hp is playing a whole and sole responsibility of manufacturing the laptop or dell or lenovo yes sir do you think every part is being developed and manufactured by hp or the laptop companies itself or they're relying no, on any no. third party companies i think they are relying, relying on third parties right so for processor it is relying on intel company let's say for battery some other company let's say the screen probably some other company camera some other company the panels the plastic panels from other company the keyboard from other company battery adapter from other company so what hp is doing probably they might be developing the motherboard and they might be assembling all the parts and they are calling it as l they have given a name as laptop but what is that that's a product that's an output correct so lg being being a company it has lot of products correct what are the products that they have probably a refrigerator a washing machine uh, probably ac TV. right tvs mobile phones they might be having a lot of things but all of them are what products they have named it like this is lg tv this is lg washing machine this is lg ac correct let's say car company let's say tata being a company in india so they have named everything as cars but ultimately that's a product of tata correct so you have lot of companies throughout the globe and every product based company he is having a product correct so what is microsoft azure it's a product of microsoft what is visual studio it's a developer tool which is a product of microsoft what is sql server powershell what is power bi power apps and flow what is xbox gaming console it is a product of microsoft even they have laptops they have tablets they have been into mobile phones everything is a product correct now we will understand how that product will be coming out for the public usage right let's talk about that so obviously that's a software development process like we have just spoke about preparation of rice there is a step by step process for developing a software developing a product developing a website is following and undergoing a stringent process so what is that process let's understand about it so before getting into what is software development life cycle i wanted to just talk about one more example from our day to day life to help you guys correlate so in order to install google chrome browser let's say i have a brand new laptop which is having windows 10 operating system obviously when i log in for the very first time what are the browsers that i can see guys in inside the windows 10 May know the browsers that I can see. Maybe Internet Explorer. What else? Google Chrome. Google Chrome is uh, by default you would be getting in Windows 10. Edge, you can see. Internet, I think, now you are seeing. Yes. So by default you would be getting Internet Explorer and edge browser microsoft edge right but yes. we were familiar with google chrome right every time we need google chrome for sure why because we are very flexible and it might be user friendly so what we do in order to install google chrome you type in you open internet explorer or edge and you type in install google chrome browser and you get an official link from google you open that and it will say download uh, the dot exe file correct Correct, guys. .exe file you have to download it. Yes, yes. So what is the .exe file? Did we ever thought what exactly that is? That might be an executable file, correct? 
so you download it and you double click to get it installed the google chrome in your browser right but did you ever thought about how come that dot exe file has been made available to the public like us to go ahead and install the chrome browser free of cost which is from an open source did you ever thought about what is the dot exe file who has uh, developed it right what are the challenges struggles that they might have undergone did you, did you ever thought about that no correct we just need the browser we know a dot exe file has to be installed and we install and we we'll execute it and the chrome would be up and running right what is the dot exe file who has prepared that may you know which company has come up with that google chrome dot exe executable file google correct so obviously there are developers who might have worked hard and they might have used a programming language it may be dot net technologies it may be java it may be python it may be node js any programming language that you take so there are certain developers from google they have developed a certain code and they have compiled the code the code has been tested and they have released the software in the form of a package or artifact which is dot exe file which is dot exe file right we did not have bothered about who has developed it what is the process of developing it correct so now we'll understand a step by step process which will actually involved in the software development life cycle right so let's talk about what is sdlc so we have just spoke about rice preparation to process we have just talked about evolution of mobile we just spoke about the google chrome executable file who has developed it who has tested it how come it has been made available to the public so that we can go ahead and uh, install free of cost and use it free of cost why because google chrome browser is an open source correct so let's talk about the software development life cycle what is the steps what is the process that we have to go ahead and follow to develop a software correct so software development life cycle is basically a process which is being used by the software development companies right once they get the requirement from the customer they will do planning they will gather the requirements they will design the software and they will develop by the developers and once the development is done the testers will be testing it and they will identify whether there are any bugs in the software whether the requirement is actually meeting the customer expectations or not and it is following the timeline or not so once everything is fulfilled without compromising on any quality parameters and uh, security parameters the software would be deployed into the production environment which means we are delivering it to the customer by following the deadlines that we have been given by the customer by following all the best practices as part of the software development life cycle right so we have to talk about cost estimates as to what is the cost that will incur to develop a software a lot of things that we will be discussing uh, in the upcoming slides so this is sdlc so in sdlc we have different models so we just uh, spoke about preparation of rice in two methods correct in the same way you can develop the software and deliver it to the customer in various methods right so one is waterfall model and the other one is agile model you have a lot of models like spiral model v model a lot of models that were available in the market let's talk about waterfall model and agile model for today as part of the demo so waterfall model the name itself says water fall so let's say if i take a glass of water and i'm pouring from up to the ground level will you be able to bring the water back if i'm pouring my water on the earth will i be able to bring the water back no no right let's say a river river will flow towards a direction with water correct when river is flowing with water towards a direction will you be able to bring the water back no no right so waterfall model is the same once you implement the process you cannot revert the changes you cannot bring it back lot of challenges with waterfall model right 
waterfall model has been used in the software industries 20 years back yes two decades back waterfall model has been implemented nowadays nobody is using waterfall model everybody wanted to go with agile and the latest models that we have why because waterfall model is an outdated model are we using still landlines or feature phones guys with keypad no <laughs> no why because we have smartphones we need social networking sites to communicate with our friends and professional network we need to access internet that's where we cannot open laptop every time right that's where we have a mobile phone so if you need something from the internet yes you can go ahead and browse it quickly but with feature phone you cannot do it so now if i ask the software development companies to use a feature phone or to use an older older model will they use it will they use for the customer no so let's talk about waterfall model in detail today right so that you will be able to understand what what are the ways that we can go ahead and develop the software what are the struggles challenges that everybody has to go ahead and uh, face it let me take out a paint right so today i'm going to talk about once again a day to day situation right so let's talk about a customer called flipkart customer or client whatever that you call it as flipkart right and may I know in which year flipkart has been established in india in which year flipkart has been established in india any idea any guess any guess guys yes let's have an interactive session that's how we can go ahead and learn i'll always talk but let's proactively talk about it maybe around 2008 yes you are correct 2008 is the year where flipkart has come into existence in india right so how a startup will be starting is a human being like us would be there obviously they would be having an idea right that idea will take it to reality so that a startup will be built correct how zomato has been come into existence how ptm has come into existence yes a human being is having an idea and they have invested money and that uh, idea has been turned into reality that has made zomato and ptm up and running in the market now and ptm and zomato have started as a startup is in 2008 or 2010 and uh, they are now listed in bombay stock exchange so is it so easy for a startup to list in bombay stock exchange no They put a lot of efforts and they have undergone a lot of challenges. That's where they were able to sustain the business in the market now. So let's talk about Flipkart. Flipkart. What is Flipkart? It's an e-commerce website where we can sign up, where we can browse through electronics, clothing, kids' item, home appliances, anything, and we can add them to the cart and we can proceed to the payment gateway. You can use debit card, credit card, or net banking or UPI wallet. or you can go on cash on delivery to order the product so that the product would be delivered to your home in the specified delivery time correct this is what the agenda of the flipkart the intention of the flipkart correct so let's forget about whether flipkart has been a copied from amazon which was already there in us from the e-commerce background or uh, the people might have uh, thought that okay in india we don't have any e-commerce website let's go ahead and uh, doll up one the intention might be anything but let's talk about flipkart Let's assume we are way back in 2008 now. So in 2008, let's assume Flipkart is not into existence. Let's assume Flipkart is not in existence, right? So we are in 2008, and let's assume Flipkart is not into existence at all. So there is an individual who is having an idea, and he might be having money, but he is not from programming background. he cannot build a website for himself so what flipkart has done let's assume and this is just as an assumption to help you guys with an example guys okay don't think that flipkart has given business to a software development company called tcs so why i'm using flipkart and tcs is everybody were aware of those companies right so let's understand flipkart has given its business to tcs tcs is what it's a software development company so well and good tcs has get grabbed the project from flipkart so obviously once we tcs got the project tcs has to be in sync with flipkart on daily basis to gather the requirements 
uh, the understanding of them what are they actually expecting to come up in the flipkart.com website correct so once the project has been got by tcs tcs has to follow a software development life cycle approach so in software development life cycle you have different stages right we have almost six to seven stages in software development life cycle like rice preparation we take two cups of raw rice first correct then you wash it then you soak it then you put it on the gas stove or in the electric rice cooker right but you don't go the other way around right do you think you will take the vessel first and you will lighten up the gas and then you take another bowl and you take raw rice and you clean it and uh, you add the water and you pour them into the vessel that was already there in the gas stove which was enlightened do you go with other way around by the time the vessel might be burned correct yes. <clears throat> So we don't go the other way around there is a step-by-step -step procedure the process has to be followed absolutely a step-by-step -step process has to be followed you cannot do uh, one two step and you cannot pitch on to fifth step directly you have to go with one two three four then only you can go to fifth step so in the same way let's understand the stages in software development life cycle right the first phase is planning phase guys the first phase is planning right so once we got the project from flipkart we have to plan from tcs what are the things that we'll be planning so customer will tell in planning stating that you guys need to develop the project and deliver in 60 days the timeline would be decided the milestone would be decided right then planning stage so we have allocated five days so we have a dedicated planning team we have members in the planning team let's assume three members that we have the three members will work with Flipkart to gather or to discuss about how they wanted to plan to build the website. So in planning, all of these things would be discussed by TCS with Flipkart. So how many resources, how many people that are needed to develop Flipkart.com? Let's assume we have 23 people. So all the 23 people would be developers, guys. All the 23 TCS will hire developers or do you have any combination combinations i think combination right so you might have let's say six developers you have three testers you have one from the deployment and release team you have one from maintenance team you have five people for design uh, three people for requirement gatherings and three people for planning and you might have operations team as well correct who will be supplying the infrastructure that is required so we'll talk about headcount and we'll have to hire certain additional people as well we don't go with strictly 23 people do you think on a given day all the 23 people will be going to office on daily basis do you think all the 23 people will be going to office and working on the development activities for flipkart no we are humans we tend to fall sick we have emergency situations where we have to attend certain rituals right we might have planned leaves where we might have to go on a vacation right so on a given day not all 23 people will be present you will have to hire certain additional people so whenever somebody is going on leave those additional people will be working on behalf of them to not to have impact on the work let's assume on a given day we just have 15 individuals who were present for the day we have only 15 individuals who were present for the day do you think all the 15 individuals will be able to finish up all the work who will do the rest of the eight people work that work will be intact nobody will touch why because everybody else is having their own work so if you have people absent for the day what will happen we won't be able to deliver the project in 60 days it might take 70 days or 75 days that's where we need to have additional buffer then in the planning phase we'll talk about billing what is billing well and good tcs has approved 23 billable headcount so what is the bill or the amount that flipkart is going to pay for each and every individual to tcs we'll talk about then we'll talk about licenses like we need windows 10 licenses we need laptops we need desktops we need visual studio we need sql server database we need certain compiler tools a lot of tools that we need and licenses for them to go ahead and work on the project 
so those will be discussed as part of licenses or infrastructure even we'll have to talk about the transport the pick and drop for the employees to company and to back to home food we have to talk logistics or infrastructure or payment gateways everything would be discussed as part of planning phase guys right why because money matters to tcs so everything we have to take it from the customer itself we don't pay anything to employees from tcs pocket guys everything that we are going to implement we have to bill the customer customer has to pay for everything so once the planning stage is done then the second stage requirement gatherings will be going and get started so we are allocating five days for requirement gatherings and we have three people to work on gathering the requirements from tcs and they will work with flipkart to see what are they expecting on flipkart website so how the requirement analysis will happen or gathering so customer will tell this is how my website should look like this is how the flipkart logo should come this is how the banner should come this is how the search box should come so customer can search any for any product right and this is how uh, the login or the cart order detail should be uh, showing up in the banner itself then the module should show up let's say if customer wanted to buy mobiles they can click on this mobiles and they should see the mobiles here right if they wanted to go to fashion yes they will be clicking on here men's fashion women's fashion kids fashion right electronics home appliances this is how the module should come up here right and the ongoing offer should go uh, in the home page on the graphical user interface as well so if the customers can see what are the uh, offers for the respective day correct then they can see a lot of other options here and if they come down they should able to see re detailed information related to flipkart so about flipkart contact them career site flipkart stories press releases payment shipping written policies social networking handles the flipkart address the payment gateway information so everything would be gathered by the tcs employees from the flipkart and once the information is gathered we will be freezing the requirement gathering space will be freezing the requirement gatherings we don't encourage customer to come in between now and uh, uh, i mean encourage for any new changes or tell about any new additions or changes to the existing requirements case will be freezing the requirement gatherings then the design team will pitch in the design team will take 10 days and they will start designing the website so what other things has to be appear where the how the look and feel how the color coding should be of the website everything would be decided by the design team once the design team is done your development team will come into picture and they will start working for the requirements that we have taken from the customer so i have six developers and they are taking 30 days why because development work will take a lot of time why because they have to come up with the programming language and they have to code for the requirements so they will be taking a lot of time here so once the development is done the testing team will be pitching in and they will start test for the requirements the testing should finish absolutely perfect if they wanted to raise any bucks if the product functionality is not working absolutely perfect as for the customer requirements they will be raising bucks with the development team again development team will rework on the code and they will fix the bugs and they will send it to the testing team testing team will again test it and certify that okay everything is working absolutely perfect and we can move on to release and deployment phase so then the release and deployment team will be pitching in and they will be delivering the product into the production environment so that we from the customer perspective can access flipkart.com can sign up can browse for the products can add the products to the cart can proceed to the payment gateway and pay through a lot of mediums net bank debit card credit card wallets upi payments cash on delivery and we can place the order and the order would be delivered to us in the stipulated time so this is the entire story of the software development life cycle so once we deploy the product into production your maintenance and monitoring team will come into picture and they monitor the server hardware they monitor the customer feedback they will probably uh, look at every issue from the server hardware they will take care of outages they will do a lot of things right so this is all about the software development life cycle at each and every stage right now let's talk about certain things so i'll play you guys a video so that you can look at certain things so i wanted to play a video to make sure that how we can look at the things in a different manner so can you watch this video and let me know what is happening
yeah can anybody summarize as to what was happened in this video probably gopinath being a testing engineer yeah Kanti. so i think he tried to search for a product which is not available so, so we are showing as a message like uh, can reach out later something like this mm -hmm. what does that mean being a testing engineer so then we look at the request maybe if some customer come and search for some product if the product is not available then we should show a message like uh, the product is not available or something like that yeah so, so basically kind of what, yeah what has happened let's say there is a sale that is going on in flipkart i clicked on the sale and uh, i'm browsing through let's say i wanted to purchase a kids table so i clicked on the kids table so the table the kids table should be shown up right but that is not happening, which is a bug. Probably the development team has to go ahead and fix it up. Let's say I have uh, your power banks, premium power banks, right? You are able to only show one, but if I click on this, you see all the power banks from different companies are showing up. So when I click on the tables, every table should show up, but unfortunately it is not showing up. It is saying something went wrong, which is there is a disconnect. There is a, uh, I mean, uh, what I can say a word called there is something broken there which the development team might have to go ahead and fix it up so which is a bug basically the testing engineer has to go ahead and raise it with the development team they have to work and they have to fix it up correct so now let's talk about disadvantages what does the stages guys we are implementing waterfall model and these are all the stages let's talk about the disadvantages now so the first disadvantage is i already told you once you gather the requirements being from TCS, if you gather the requirement from Flipkart, you will be freezing the requirements, right? So you will work with those requirements at the development stage, you will test and if everything goes well, you deploy it. Now what has happened? Flipkart has come at the stage of deployment into production and they are saying, hey guys, initially I have given you guys a requirement of developing top offers module well and good you guys have developed but now what i need you know i need a drop down in top offers i need a drop down in top offers module so you can see a drop down here it fashion correct so whenever i hit on drop down what i'm able to see men top wear men bottom wear women and ethnic kids i'm able to see a lot of things correct so customer is telling this kind of drop down i need it here as well so what is the options that should show up while they are hovering on drop down on top offers it should show men let's say 20 percent discount women clothing 30 percent discount kids clothing probably 15 percent discount let's say electronics laptops let's say 25 percent discount let's say appliances 15 percent discount that is how the drop down should show up right so now Flipkart has come up. The customer has come up at the deployment phase, guys. We are already done with the project. On which day we were in? We were in 55th day. And now customer is coming after completing 55 days where our product is done. It's time to deliver into the production, into the public. Now customer is coming at this stage and telling that, hey guys, can you add the drop down in top offers? So guys, do you think is it possible? Is it possible at this juncture? Uh, no, probably in waterfall mother, it can't be possible. Oh, it has to change a lot. Oh, that's so yes, it is not possible. So let's talk, go back to the rice preparation scenario. Right? Let's assume I have put the rice in the rice bowl in the electric rice cooker and switched on the switch. And it's been 10 minutes now. The rice is half cooked. Now my wife is coming and stating that, hey, why are you preparing white rice for me? Can you make it uh, biryani or pulao? Is it possible at this juncture? Yes, yeah. is it possible after cook after having the rice cooked for 10 minutes? Is it possible to have a pulao or biryani? No, right? It is not possible. Why? Because the rice is already cooked to some extent. So probably I can accommodate my wife request, but I have to throw that rice out and I have to start preparation from the scratch. Again, I have to take 
raw rice again i have to clean it again i have to soak it add water and now if i have to go with biryani probably what i have to do i have to put a vessel or uh, a kadai i have to add oil i have to add the spices i have to add let's say if it is a vegetable biryani probably carrot beans a potato cauliflower a lot of spices i have to add it right then i can put the rice then the biryani would happen what is this this is an additional effort this will take a lot of time correct so do you think when i'm talking about additional time do you think customer will agree to extend the project to 80 days from 60 days when we are extending the project for 20 more days what is going to happen you know who will pay for additional 20 days bill to the employees to the licenses transport food logistics do you think customer is ready to pay for them no they don't ready to pay for them but they wanted to accommodate those requests here but unfortunately we cannot accommodate any new feature requests or any changes to the existing requirements that we might have already taken from the customer why because i'll let you know why because we have hired these developers for this project flipkart project for 60 days probably instead of 60 i would be reserving all the 23 people for 65 days and now let's assume i have one more customer like walmart has come into picture walmart has given a project walmart has given a project to tcs this is another project so what tcs has assured walmart we will be going to get started with this project once this project completes why because by the time the developers the team would be free so we have already committed to other customer stating that we'll be starting the project once this project's ended up so we have already committed all the engineers or developers testers to this project now do you think we can go back to flipkart and assure that okay you can take uh, 10 more days 20 more days to accommodate the new requirements no guys it is not possible it is a huge risk so development projects are time bound projects once the development project is done we'll be reusing we'll be using these engine in uh, developers or testers for other projects so we don't have time to cater to this customer that's where requirement gatherings is not possible here at the later stage we cannot go ahead and do any changes to the existing requirements this is the very biggest disadvantage the other disadvantage is every team is dependent here so what is the initial phase planning so in planning only planning team works with the customer to get the things done in the planning stage once the planning stage is finishes off then only the requirement analysis or gathering team will be coming into picture and they start working on their job till then design phase will be idle development team would be sitting idle testing deployment maintenance team will be sitting idle they don't have any work they don't have any work in the waterfall model that's where this model is not being used this is a never ending process this is a never ending process that's where we have dev ops has been come into picture one more disadvantage here is let's say developers if they have to work what they needed they need a laptop or desktop they need an operating system they need ms office they need sql server database they need visual studio they need certain compiler tools right so do you think developer will install everything and they will start programming in the real time do developers capable enough to set up the infrastructure themselves they have to worry about the infrastructure setup or they have to worry about the programming language Chris, any response do the developers worry about setting up the infrastructure do you think developers are experts in setting up the infrastructure or their responsibility is just the coding i think it's for go coding coding only right then who will provide the infrastructure for the developers it's the internal it team of tcs correct so whenever developer needs something they will raise a ticket with the it support engineer do you think the it support engineer will be providing the infrastructure uh, right away no they will take their own time they should see whether the licenses are available first with the company or not whether the hardware is available or not 
right whether the resources are available to set up the infrastructure with the development team or not lot of challenges lot of unavailability is so in the traditional way of software development it's always a gap there is a huge gap that is there with the development and it operations team so in order to eliminate that gap we have dev ops that has been come into picture what is dev ops it's dev development team ops is your it operations team so they will be working collaboratively and coordinatedly for a common goal called developing the software and delivering it to the customer with highest quality and security without compromising on anything else with following the timelines as well that's where the latest technology that is devops so i'll go with another example now from the agile perspective from the agile perspective i'll be going with an example guys okay, so let's give me a minute there is somebody who is knocking the door i'll be back So I guess I'm back. So we'll be going with agile model now. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a snippet to discuss what is going to happen actually in real time. So I'm taking this as an example, right? So what we are going to do is, yes, we gather the requirements, right? We gather the requirements. and uh, let's assume top offers module is one requirement i'm giving it to developer one let's say we have three developers in the project the second requirement groceries module i'm giving it to developer two the third requirement mobile modules development i'm giving it to developer three right so let's assume top offers module has been developed by the developer they are free now what they will do they will move on and taking fashion module for developing it so d1 will come up now this development activity for top office is done now what is the next job you have tester let's say the tester one has been coming into testing engineer has coming in and start testing the top office module right by the time developer 2 has finished off and he will be moving on to electronics module right so here the tester 2 will come in let's say we have two testers right now let's understand the tester 1 has finished testing the module and they certified the top offers is working as per customer expectations now what next the release and deployment team has to come in and they have to deploy this into production meanwhile the tester 1 will go here meanwhile the developer 3 will pick up home module right the t2 has been done here then release and deployment team will come here and deploy the groceries module in production the t2 will go here right so now release and deployment team has been released this module into production then the maintenance team maintenance and monitoring team will come into picture and they will monitor this module in the production so now what is happening here guys everybody is in sync everybody is working simultaneously or parallelly nobody is free here so this is what this is your agile model so if you follow this approach may I know in how many days we should be able to deliver the project so earlier it was 60 days now we should be able to deliver the project in 40 days itself and now we should be able to encourage the customer now customer can come at any stage and i can say that guys i'm not happy with top offers i need drop down here yes we can go ahead and implement that as well we can go ahead and implement that as well do you think now if tcs is denying the customer requirement at the point of deployment do you think flipkart will still be giving and uh, going with the project with tcs no they have other companies who might accept the changes why because they might be using devops methodology 
So TCS might go to other companies, other software development companies like let's say Accenture or Cognizant, Capgemini, a lot of companies that you have in the market, correct? So now due to the technology evolution, you have to encourage the customer. Why? Because customer had mode swings. They give initial requirements something and they change the mindset. They give us other requirements, right? So customers are got to the companies and we have to definitely accept their requirements. We have to go with the changes in the existing requirements or we have to accept the new future requests that they might be giving to us. So that is only possible nowadays with the DevOps approach case, right? So any questions before we move on to the presentation? Before we move on to the presentation case. So what we spoke about, we spoke about software development lifecycle. I believe by this time you might have understood what is the process that is involved in developing a software. It may be an executable software, it may be a website, right? It can be anything, right? So this is what we have followed, the different steps. Correct requirement gathering, design, implementation, testing, deployment, and maintenance in waterfall. So we even discussed about the disadvantages. Right, so I wanted to. I don't wanted to go with again. Why? Because we already discussed that. So agile model, we have already discussed. So what is agile model? It's an incremental model. It's an iterative and incremental model. So basically, the requirement will be split into multiple work items, and multiple items would be assigned to the individual developers. So everybody will go on the work. Nobody would be free. So once the development is done, developer will be picking up other work item or other category or catalog or module and the testing team will be pitching in and they start testing it. So everything will happen simultaneously this. And we would be releasing the things into production at an incremental manner, right? So basically agile software development method emphasizes on iterative, incremental and it's an evolutionary development nowadays, right? So we should be agile now you take at a uh, individual level you take at a company level you take at a project level we need to be agile we need to be robust we need to be dynamic we need to be flexible enough to make sure that we are accepting the changes from the customer and implementing in the real time so the best example agile model flipkart we have gone into it it's not just flipkart you take any social networking site so let's say i've installed whatsapp today and probably after a week or 10 days, I would get an update from WhatsApp to update uh, the software, correct? So when I I'll go with an update, I'll be getting new features, correct? So why we are getting new features? Why? Because cost WhatsApp might be taking the feedback from the end customers and they might be implementing a lot of things. Like that to Facebook, you see, if you open Facebook today and after 10 days, you might not be able to see the same graphical user interface. There might be new features, new options that they might have added. In the same way you take Twitter, Instagram, or any social networking site for that matter. So every site is agile, they, that is dynamic. So delay, we have already discussed, the delay will happen between development team and operations team in the a traditional way of developing the software. And in order to avoid, we will be getting into DevOps. So now let's talk about the responsibilities of operations team guys. So what they will do, the operations team, they will install, they will support the developers for getting the software installation done or setting up the server hardware and operating system. They'll also configure the servers to have the deployment happen. They will talk about internet or network or storage. They'll also monitor the servers once something is deployed into production. They will also take care of the outages They'll also take care of security. They will be part of the change control board. They'll also take the responsibility of backing up and setting up the disaster recovery for your respective websites or products. They'll also talk about production support. Once we deploy the things into production, so they will take care of the production issues. They will gather the feedback from the customer or the client and they basically work towards implementing it again. Now let's talk about Microsoft Azure. So we are going to learn DevOps on the cloud on Microsoft Azure, right? 
so we are not going to use any physical infrastructure guys we are not going to use any physical hardware software to deploy the product we are going to use the microsoft azure's infrastructure which was located somewhere virtually right so we need an internet connectivity we need a browser to establish or, or to deploy the infrastructure to have our product or website hosted in the server hardware which is present in microsoft azure data centers right so microsoft azure is a product that has been developed by microsoft in the year 2010 right and they named the cloud service as azure so why we use azure to build to test and to deploy and to manage the applications using microsoft managed data centers which were spread across the world now let's understand what is devops so I was keep on talking about collaboration and coordination, correct? So dev is development team, ops is your IT operations team, right? So basically in IT operations or in the DevOps project, you would be having multiple teams, guys. One is the development team, one is the testing team, one is the DevOps engineering team, one you have ITIL team, you have a scrum master, you have uh, uh, the a change control team you have release and deployment team right you might be having the azure infrastructure team where they will be helping you to set up the infrastructure you might have a windows administrator or linux administrator you have a system administrator a lot of teams that will come together right they would be always in sync and they will gather the requirements they would be identifying the dependencies and they would be sorting out then and there itself so that's where every company now every customer wanted the software to be developed using devops approach why because if you use devops approach we can go ahead and deploy the things faster in an automated way right so we have a lot of tools from devops perspective where we can go ahead and we use to automate the deployment process to automate the software deployment process so if you use devops it will be a value added and the product that you are going to deliver is super reliable with a lot of quality features, a lot of security features. So you should not have to bother about the product outcome, right? This is all about DevOps. So this is the life cycle. So we spoke about the software development life cycle, correct? So this is the life cycle of Azure DevOps case. So how it starts? Again, it starts with planning. Again, the development team will start developing uh, the requirements, the piece of code. Then here our DevOps engineering role will be coming into picture and we'll be using Azure pipelines. We'll be integrating and we'll be building the things with continuation integration and continuous deployment, right? Then we'll be packaging the solution in the form of .exe or .var or .jar, .msi, right? Depends on the programming language and the testing team would be testing uh, the package and the release and deployment team would be releasing into the production, into the Azure infrastructure, let's say into Docker, Kubernetes, virtual machines, Azure web applications. They can deploy into multiple resources that we have. And then your maintenance and monitoring team will come and they monitor uh, using uh, certain tools called Azure Monitor or the Azure Reporting Services. And they will be monitoring the production environment and they will be taking the feedback from the customer. And again, the planning things will happen. Again, the development team will develop the new features. Again, DevOps engineering will be doing the integration and the building up. This is a never ending process, guys. You see, this is going in a loop. This life cycle is going in a loop. This is a never ending process. Until unless customer comes and say that, guys, we are done with the project, it's now time to ramp down. So till that time, we have to keep on doing the activities simultaneously. So every team here, would be having work every team is simultaneously working towards achieving the common goal of delivering the software to the customer case so you see every stage we are using some tool so for planning we will be using azure boards for development we'll be using github and azure repos for integrating and building the things we are using azure pipelines for ci cd operations for packaging we are using azure artifact for testing we are using test plans right for release and uh, build we'll use azure infrastructure right then for configuring or for maintenance and monitoring, we'll use Azure Monitor, right? This is how the things will keep on moving in the Azure DevOps lifecycle, guys. So let's talk about the certification path. So people will always ask, Kranti, okay, I'm taking up Azure DevOps course. So once the course is completed, is it important for me to go ahead and complete the certification? 
guys it is not mandatory it is optional it's up to you but if you ask me let's say 30 people are there who have taken up the training out of that 15 people only completed the certification so if you ask me if i from a technical panel if i select the people who have completed the training and certification or i select the people who have just completed the training only anybody have an answer who will i hire the folks who have just... no your approach is wrong i'll select the individual who will be clearing the technical round with me though you complete the certification though you don't you satisfy me you satisfy my requirements the questions that i ask i'll take you irrespective whether you complete the certification or not why you know do i know from a technical panel that you have completed your certification on your own or you have completed with, by taking somebody's help why because in market if you give money everybody can go ahead and do the certification on behalf of yourself right so certification nowadays people are going and doing it for the sake of doing it but if you genuinely do it you will be able to implement in the real time in front of the customer so if you ask me you can do the certification probably if you wanted to know whether the concept that you have learned is helpful in clearing the certification but for me irrespective whether you complete the certification or not i need you to clear the technical round let's assume i blindly taken an individual stating that this guy has completed devops certification and i have taken them into the project and they have did an escalation to me they have did an escalation in the project and customer is worried about who will they point out obviously they will point out the to the one who has taken them into the project obviously it's me so i should not have to compromise stating that you have certification i will be able to blindly select you for the company no it's up to you it's an optional if you want to prove that okay you learned and you are able to clear the certification well and good otherwise it is not important but people will generally ask okay kranthi i wanted to do the certification can you guide me so in order to do az400 azure devops certification you first have to complete either az104 which is azure fundamental uh, azure administrator or you have to complete az204 which is azure developer either of the one you have to cover it guys to go with az400 so i'll just cover the course content that we have so in the course content we were already covering azure fundamentals and certain concepts of azure administration as well why because you cannot directly learn devops you have to know the infrastructure first then only we can get into devops so as part of infrastructure we'll be covering the azure fundamentals and azure administrator as well so let me go with the course content and i'm okay to take up any questions that you guys might be having so this is the course content that we have guys so if you look at it we'll be starting from the scratch we will be starting from the scratch so we'll be talking about the cloud overview the what is cloud computing what are the concepts involved right why it is a lot of boom in the market right once we are done with that we'll be touching base on azure concepts the services right so once those are done we'll be getting into the devops introduction probably we'll talk about the it life cycle or architecture a few things from networking right we'll be doing a lot of labs right so we'll be starting networking then we'll be moving to linux guys linux is mandatory if you are learning devops so if you don't know what is linux i am here to teach you from scratch there is no need to worry at all right so basically there is no prerequisite that is needed to take up this course why because i am saying even freshers can come and take up this course when i'm talking about freshers do freshers know anything on programming languages or scripting or commands no they might not be knowing anything so i'm here from kerry it to teach you from the scratch you should not have to worry about it you can completely rely on getting the things from the scratch on every concept that we are putting up here so we'll learn about certain linux commands operating system we'll talk about package management service management process management then we'll be moving on to azure compute we'll be deploying virtual machines we'll be talking about what is availability options that we have then we'll move on to networking and we'll do a lot of labs here and then we'll talk about storage then we'll move on to the source code management so these are the tools that will be starting from the devops perspective so we'll start about version controlling tool git this is a very first tool from the uh, 
devops perspective so git will be used by developers not the devops engineers but this course is for devops engineers correct but we will be learning git github maven things and stuff from a developer perspective guys though you are a devops engineer you are going to be a devops engineer once you join a company we'll have to know what is the role of a developer what they do how they work with the source code right how they compile the code how they push the code into a remote repository called github right everything we'll learn from developer what is the role of a testing engineer how we can do from a developer perspective we'll be understanding it so we'll cover git github here then we'll go to uh, the infrastructure as a code perspective where we'll be talking about terraform right so we'll use hcl language hashicorp uh, language uh, to deploy the resources in azure right so this is the most happening thing in the market so you look at any job description for any company they are definitely asking about terraform right so we'll cover ansible which is a configuration management tool right then we'll cover the most happening tool in the market which is jenkins right this is a ci cd tool to uh, make sure that the integration and uh, build is happening correct then we'll go to the kubernetes and dockers right again these are also the most happening uh, things in the market you have a lot of openings on dockers and kubernetes right so we'll be getting in depth and we'll be understanding how we can deploy the resources on dockers and kubernetes right and we'll be talking about monitoring tools like azure monitor from the inbuilt azure perspective and we'll be talking about a third party tool called negios as well right so then we'll talk about certain azure devops services which are inbuilt within azure portal so we'll talk about azure boards we'll talk about repositories for the developers we'll talk about cacd pipelines for devops engineers we'll talk about test plans for the testers and we'll talk about azure artifacts so these are all the tools and concepts that we are gonna learn guys so if you are a beginner if you are a fresher if you are from a non-technical background or if you are from an it professional from any other background you can easily go ahead and get started there is no prerequisite that is needed right this is all from the demo perspective course content perspective i believe you might have uh, got the sense as to i concentrated on mostly the day-to-day -day example so that you can correlate correct so this is how our regular classes are also gonna be i'll more talk about from the day-to-day -day examples i'll talk about the official theory and real time so that you can correlate everything for an easy understanding is for an easy understanding so now i'm open to any questions that you guys might be having now so before that i wanted to tell something that we are going to start a new batch in the next week right so the dates would be communicated uh, the timings are gonna be a uh, morning uh, 6 a.m to 7 a.m ist we are gonna take it from monday to friday at times we might even take saturdays as well and the course duration might last from uh, 50 to 60 days so it might range close to two months if i have to say so that's pretty much from the demo i'm open to any questions that you guys might be having now any questions i think this is the right time why because you guys joined the demo session considering that you might be moving to azure devops so i believe you guys might be having a lot of questions so it's the time to go ahead and ask them any questions guys you can unmute and you can ask me any questions from anybody are we clear did we got an understanding as to what is the traditional way of developing the software and with the devops that is coming into picture what exactly we can do did you understand the software development life cycle any questions hello sir uh, to learn this uh, azure devops so any prerequisites like uh, python uh, basics are needed not needed we don't gonna touch with python guys python is it's optional In but uh, as part of this course we're not going to discuss about python why because python is a package it's a completely different course 
and you cannot learn along with DevOps. You have to spend at least one one half month to learn Python itself. Oh. Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? Yes, feel free to ask. Even if you have a silly question, probably that might be a valid question for somebody else. Okay, again, I wanted to reiterate, we are gonna start the batch from next week. We will be deciding on the date, but uh, the timing would be 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. IST in the morning. And we will be going with Monday to Friday. At times, we might even take on Saturdays. And the course duration might last at least uh, two months, if I have to say. Any final questions before we call out for the day? OK. Thank you all. Uh, have a great day. I believe you like the session. So if you want to enroll, yes, you can reach out to the numbers that were mentioned in the chat window. I really appreciate and thank you for your time on the weekend to attend the demo session on Azure DevOps. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Take care. Thank you. Sir.